What's up again, YouTube? Hyperion here. Uh, we're back at Hyperion Castle, um, and uh, I just wanted to give a little demonstration here because um, if you watch my previous videos, you know that I love item frames as switches. Um, I use it in the library, and I also use it here uh, at the Golden Sword. Um, by twisting the Golden Sword, I open this piston door here, which uh, leads to a secret passageway. And uh, for the most part, a lot of the people who come into my world are shocked. They didn't even know item frames could be uh, used as switches, and uh, so therefore they don't even know to even check that. And uh, the biggest reason why is, uh, I, you know, I don't like switches, I don't like buttons, so I love these because they, they blend into the wall, they look nice, they add to the decoration, and uh, most of all, they hide your secret stuff. And the other... Uh, trick you can uh, do with them is uh, down here if you'll note from any previous videos if you haven't seen my previous videos um, I have these three item frames and they're all in weird shapes and, the, and there's a secret door over here and the way that they work is that it's a uh, it works as a combination lock they do not activate the door at all unless they are in the absolute exact spot on the item frame wheel I guess I don't even know what to say there but yeah helps if I uh, remember my own combination. But yeah, as you can see there, uh, only when they're in this specific place uh, will they open the door. And if I so much as twist one of them, um, it closes the, the door back up. So that gives you uh, tons of possibilities at uh, secret rooms and uh, stuff like that. So I just wanted to show everybody uh, what, what witchcraft I was using to uh, make this work and it's uh, actually really simple once you uh, get a brief little rundown of it and so I built uh, on my roof here some uh, demonstrations for you so we're gonna start over here and break this uh, torch off there because uh, I was uh, practicing and uh, uh, kind of uh, got ahead of myself anyways um, but as we see here we've got an item frame on a block and behind the block we have a comparator and that comparator is connected to a long line of redstone and the redstone has a bunch of torches under it and what's going to go happen here is we're going to go ahead and put an item in the uh, in the item frame and as you can see the first torch has gone out and the reason for this is that the comparator compare oh my god comparator I, I should have somebody slap me every time I say comparator I don't know why I keep doing that Anyways, uh, the comparator is reading a redstone signal off of the item in the frame, but it's only one block. It's not reaching to the next block uh, and uh, not turning off this torch. But if we were to turn this one, you'll notice the next torch goes out. That means the power has increased and it has uh, moved on to the next block. Now, if we continue to rotate it, you'll see it'll go all the way, and this is the last point on the item frame, uh, all the way down, and it moves about seven blocks. Uh, it, it's actually eight, but we're kind of not counting this first one because it's always powered on, but it is not reaching the ninth block. So um, that is uh, one thing to note, is that it only reaches a maximum of eight blocks beyond, uh, not, uh, not, not just the frame, but uh, from the comparator as well. So, uh, but one thing you can do if you want it to um, power something on at the end of its of its cycle, um, just add a repeater right there, and now it should uh, power it on uh, from that from that last point, but uh, not from any other point prior. So, um, another um, trick you can do is uh, if you add a, a repeater right here, um, that will now power the item. Um, whatever it is that you want to power uh, from that point on. Let me uh, go ahead and uh, add that redstone back. Um, so yeah, so if you say, uh, go back to the first one, you'll notice that uh, the first block is powered, but this one isn't, so the repeater isn't powered. But if we turn it one notch, should reach that next block and power the repeater. Uh, now that that has come on, we see power all the way to the end. And uh, that way we can uh, just, as soon as we get one tick out of it, um, we get power to our item, whatever it may be. Um, from there on though, however, uh, as you rotate, it will stay on all the way except for the first one. And if you move it down uh, a little bit or put, put it right here, um, for instance, you'll, you know, it'll only activate at a certain point um, once the power has reached it. So now it's more like three, three spots and then it powers on. So you can use that for a lot of tricks. Now, if you were to also um, let's put the redstone back and take the repeater and put it right here on that first block that's always powered. Now we have power all the way down the line 
um, or powering whatever item we want, and it doesn't matter where on the board, the, uh, on the frame, the item is pointing. So as you can see by the redstone torches, nothing's coming on at all. So it's it's going to be a constant power source for you. One way you can use this is uh, if you actually come up and break the item, you'll notice it now um, unpowers, turning on all the redstone torches. So if you were to uh, say make that a key to a door, you put that in and that now opens the door. So, or you can have it holding something closed uh, when it's unpowered and then, or when it's powered and break it and now it opens up. So that uh, opens up a bunch of silly possibilities. Like for instance, uh, this contraption that I, it's a very simplified version of something I built in a friend's world. I can't access that world to show you, but uh, what it was was it was kind of a Hunger Game style world where everybody's kind of fighting for themselves and they wanted me to come in and build a bunch of booby traps for them. And what I did here is, uh, you can see it's it's powering that first block. I don't have a repeater, I just have some redstone because you don't need that for this system. But uh, the sword is powering it and uh, nothing I do rotating it will change anything. However, being that this was a um, Hunger Games world where everybody's fighting to survive, somebody might come along and say, hey, uh, I uh, really would want a sword and there's a sword. And you can put up all kinds of warnings saying, hey, you can't have this sword, don't take this sword. And what I did uh, was I built a room out of... Uh, obsidian and uh, put a bunch of pistons all over the place with a steel door uh, and a button and uh, what happens is once you uh, go ahead and uh, I'm gonna make such a mess here break that item it opens up the piston and the piston then uh, uh, dumped in uh, their case lava on their heads so yeah uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that I'm gonna have to probably fix some of my redstone now oh I didn't think this through in the I should have tried it in the demo all right let's Come on. All right. Yeah. So that would be one fun way to uh, to to play with that is uh, make it so that it's a it's a booby trap. And in my in my world, I did a better job designing it with more complicated circuitry uh, that wasn't um, exposed to the uh, to the water. But uh, I'm not sure what happened here. We did replace the item, so I I think what's going on here is it's actually the the item frame broke, but the game didn't read it. Um, so let's try. Try this again. There you go. So that closed it up again. Um, but in my world, uh, that problem, uh, in that other world, that that problem didn't happen, and that uh, just led to um, the only way for them to survive is to quickly put the sword back. Um, but anyways, so uh, let's. Uh, hopefully, I didn't mess up my redstone too bad over here. I did knock some torches down, and it is nighttime, so I should probably replace those. Because as you know, I only play in survival, and uh, and I don't uh, I don't I don't play in peaceful. So. Um, Anyways, we've got here is a bunch of crazy circuitry. What's going on here? This is our combination lock system. Now you see we have two items. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make them the same item just so you know you don't think there's some trickery here. Um, and our comparators are reading into these blocks, which was uh, again, as you'll note, only powering that first block. So, but if we were to rotate this, you'll see that at a certain point, um, that that redstone torch goes off. And what's going on here? That redstone torch is powering this. Um, was powering this redstone line um, and we have a comparator one block and and this is very important one block away because that block right now is not powered uh, but we have a compare uh, repeater not comparator uh, one block away and all of this redstone is running from this torch and this repeater and it's all running over to these pistons and as you can see the redstone torch went off but the pistons did not open but let's go over here to this one and rotate it i think one two there we go and now you can see the door came up now if i was to come back over here um and turn this one more the door has closed again and you might be wondering why well now that redstone has reached one more block further and is now hitting this repeater which is now again powering the system and that is on both sides so if i turn this one more, now we have power running to the pistons. So you gotta find that sweet spot of how far uh, does it deactivate, which is uh, in this one's case, that would be one, two. And in this one, it looks like one, two, three, four. Oh, it was four, but there was a delay, so four. So four and two is my first two combinations. Now you can make a whole line of these. You can make them as long as you want. As long as the redstone can continuously uh, reach itself and touch uh, this main redstone line that feeds into the pistons, you can just keep adding them. So um, yeah, so you could have hundreds and thousands and millions of combination 
possibilities if you just know um, uh, how far down a row you want your redstone to reach. And now one flaw with this is that it is uh, a bit uh, it's a bit heavy in space like it, it takes takes up a lot of space as you can see because you need that long redstone run and you got to be careful to space everything out so that redstone doesn't touch its touch each other uh, when it doesn't mean when it doesn't need to so one way around this though is you can do a uh, roundabout way here with uh, with with this but you got to make sure to leave a space in there and let's throw a torch uh, where are my torches right there let's throw a torch right yeah there and break that and we'll go ahead and break these um, I shouldn't be using my efficient high efficiency uh, pickaxe here because that's a uh, it's really uh, really efficient um, but yeah let's see if we still get this thing to work uh, I actually haven't tested this so we'll go ahead and throw that on there and uh, we need another block and we'll break that and redstone so uh, in theory this should um, also work um, very similar let's see so now we've got it at uh, seven uh, I think that's right one two three four five six sorry six six is now activating it and we haven't had to extend further on so that that's one way to get around that little uh, issue with these things is to just snake everything around and just make sure that everything comes back around as you can see I bent this one around here and uh, make sure it all just comes back around to the pistons so that's how the combination lock system works it's it's the redstone is reaching far enough to deactivate this torch but it's not reaching far enough to activate this so that's your sweet spot and uh, to set a number you just basically figure out you you just set it to how many ticks you want how many um, spots on the thing you want um, so in this case two and then that's where you put your redstone torch um, so yeah it's as simple as that it's a really uh, easy uh, fun trick to do um, there are other methods I'll link down in the description below other methods to doing this um, but uh, this is my favorite one because it's really easy to change the combination um, well I, I take that back it's not that easy but this is the one this one versus some of the others I've seen allows you to put the items in a row like an actual combination uh, the other ones I've seen typically have to be built uh, like uh, spaced one two three four instead of side by side but this one uh, you can do side by side as long as you make sure to leave a space in between them so anyways that's uh, that's how you make a combination lock and how uh, redstone um, or how item frames can generate redstone uh, so I hope uh, I hope that was uh, informational for you and uh, educational and uh, uh, I'd like to thank you for watching if you have any uh, further questions make sure to comment um, in the comments and tell me some stories of ways that you might uh, have used uh, item frames as a fun switch uh, so thank you for watching uh, we'll see you next time